Okay. It just makes a lot of sense coming at it from the from the religious aspect because um, there is the practice of separation of church and state, and we well, all are spiritual so beings. Yes, there will be a refinement to this, though. Is that, uh, even though we keep the concept, we don't use the word church. Patrick will go into that tonight. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. There's, there's uh, the history of that is quite interesting. But yes, uh, the, the, uh, the religious aspect, being a set of beliefs, is uh, is most important. <clears throat> the state yes. is a church. The state is a church. So they, they set up their own religion. Mm-hmm. They have their own belief system, sure. They have their own belief system. Mm-hmm. And they incorporate a whole bunch of different beliefs in that. I mean, environmentalism is a belief system. Uh, mm-hmm. How do you create the text on an angle like that? The um the thing to print on the on the documents? That's a very interesting question. I don't know how to do that. I maybe I have, been, I mean, I have tried tried that in so many different ways and I can never get it to work. Well, the easiest way I had of doing it is just print it out, cut it out. Mount it on a piece of paper at an angle and scan it back in. All right. If you have Microsoft Office, you take Microsoft Publisher and you use that. Uh, okay. And then you can turn that at an angle and then just put your typing in there. Okay. And then you just Microsoft make a template Publisher. like that, but it's on Microsoft mm. Publisher. Okay. <clears throat> and yeah, so if you do have Microsoft Office, you should have Microsoft Publisher in there. Yeah, I do have that publisher. I didn't know you could do that in there. Okay, thanks. I wanted to change it and make the text red. Make it what? Make it red. Yeah, you can do that. I just put put it out as black there so basically people could see it. Right. Then you'll have to do it, change it, uh, especially for the baptismal one. You'll have to change that from the United States Corporation to... Uh, the Church of Rome Corporation. Right. And then also, you want to change down underneath there, witness my hand uh, uh, to Ecclesia Tribunal Executorial Trustee. Oh, okay. Yeah, change the word in the all the documents there from tribal to tribunal. Right. Okay, we have 11 now, Patrick. Okay, nobody have any questions or anything or comments about this document, period? Well, my, yeah, I've actually since yesterday been studying the words. I said since yesterday I've only been studying the words. Okay. 
there's a lot of meaning in there. Yeah. I've been through it about one and a half times, and I need to go through them some more because you can see the relationships. Yeah. Are you talking about the new document, the the uh, short one? No, I just the got on the call. That's why. Definitions. No, well, the, the one that was posted up yesterday, the ecclesiastical quiet claim deed. Oh, okay, the one you talked about. That's the big show. thing, okay? Hey, Patrick, you call it quiet claim, but you spell it quit claim. Did you hear me? Yeah. Did I spell that wrong? Shit. No, quit, quit claim is, is the way it's in the definitions, isn't it? It should be a quit claim, right? Quiet claim is when you do something uh, behind somebody's back. Go to the definitions. Do I have it spelled right? Quiet, Q-U-I-T-E, claim. That's that's spelled quit, not quiet. Q-U-I-T is, is quit, and the Q-U-I-E-T is quiet. Yeah, quit, quit claim. Right, right, okay. I'm just correcting you then. Your okay. Yeah. Yeah. The document. The document's correct. You just got called it wrong just now. Okay. Uh, it's spelled right, right? Yeah, it's spelled yeah. quick. Yeah. I thought. I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah, you're just saying it different. Yeah. Well, basically, it's uh, quiet to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, another another. Situations, I think. I'd, There's no uh, argument. Heard it There's no court. argument. Okay. Yeah. I heard that's it in the, court. That's the court. bottom line. Okay. Yeah. Nobody can argue this. Oh, okay. I, there, there's an action called quiet title, but, but quit claim is, is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's. I, I figured that out. Okay. So do we send it out to the people who are coming after us and the Supreme Court, or just the Supreme Court? Well, they see depending on what you're using it for. What are they coming after you for? Income tax, and uh, my, they locked my son up after they took him from me and gave him to my ex-wife, and uh, he got in trouble because, you know, it messed him up. It tore him, tore him up, so he got locked up and got in trouble, and they charged all the debt on me, which is like hundreds and thousands of dollars, and now they're coming after me for that, and they're coming after me for past child support after I already paid two children off that they took from me and gave to her, and she filed a whole bunch of motions after me, and uh, now it, it's just one uh, one tragedy after another with all these um, uh, debt collections coming after me from the front of the court and from the income tax, and I was thinking maybe I could send this out to the, the, both of those Parties and to the Supreme Court. That's you know that's what I'm kind of asking. Yes, and basically you would take one of the key things. You'd take that marriage certificate that basically was there, and you're going to uh, demand an accounting of that uh, policy. Okay. See that marriage certificate was a another uh, promissory uh, assurance promissory note. It was an assurance policy. That they offered it was to me. There, it was there to assure that there would be support if one of the living parents died or got separated. So there is an insurance policy, an assurance policy there to protect for the raising of the children. So that marriage certificate has value. They're trying to get you to pay out of your back pocket. Exactly. Yeah. And see, that's where you've got to come in as the Ecclesia Tribunal Executorial Trustee over this dead person. Because... Basically, if you're over the age of 21, 
that fiction, okay, your mm-hmm. prodigal son and her prodigal daughter or whatever, they're both dead. Right. Now, you come in, and they're in, they're testators, and they're holding the assets in an inalienable condition under that marriage license. So you have to come in as this elect, uh, executorial trustee, and you demand an accounting of that, and then you can basically bust that down. You have the power wow. to override the inalienable properties that are out there. And they have them in a uh, in a in a um, an account or in my account through to in through to it's my account. It's in an account. It's in a in a uh, insurance policy. Have you ever had insurance? No. Whole really. life insurance or anything like that. House insurance. No. Never. Car insurance. No. Uh, I really never paid for car insurance. So I did one, once or twice a long time ago. I did I did sign up for car insurance. Okay. They see you put a premium in. They see that policy had some value. It was accruing additional value the longer you held it from the premium that you paid into it. Right. And see what they did with the marriage license, they went and placed a lien against your assets, your prodigal son's assets over there, and have been writing bonds against it. Behind my The accrual has been deposited in under that marriage certificate assurance policy number. Somebody needs to mute out. See, that's what this whole thing is. It's all about assurance, the same as insurance. But it's at the state level. The state can't sell insurance, but they can sell assurance. And then all these black robes out here, okay, the bar attorneys and everything else, they're basically acting really as assurance brokers, adjustment brokers. So if, so if I got a uh, notice in the mail today that says notice of intent to report child support debt to credit reporting agencies, and uh, you know, telling putting here over two thousand dollars and giving a case number, and an honorable ca- uh, Catherine Viviano, the judge, and coming from the state. You of write this quiet claim or quick claim deed up against a marriage license. Okay. Against a birth certificate, against whatever documents you have, your certificate of title to your house, your vehicle, your driver's license. Send them all in. Okay. Take control away from them. So I don't have to send it to to these to this uh, person direct, the state directly. This ones, the state ones you have to send to the state courts. Okay. Okay. You're going to have to think about this. How you want to do this? Okay. Okay. The the best thing to do is to have it all moved up to the federal court level, and then let the federal level do it. I see. At the state level, would that be the state Supreme Court then? The what? At the state level, would that be the state Supreme Court? No. Any court, court at the state level is an equity court. Every ah. court out here right now is equity. Uh, so the court okay? that's they're giving after them... fucking money. <laughs> okay, so the court that's giving them the grief, that's where who gets it. Yes. Okay. Send it in to them. Write this thing up. Think about this, though, okay? This isn't that hard a document to think about. Okay. 
No, it all makes perfect sense when you're reading through it. It's just I want to be able to say it without looking at a piece of paper. You never do that. You always have that piece of paper in your hand. Hmm. You try and go from memory, and basically they can get you off track, and then basically you're going to mess it up. So you better have that piece of paper in front of you. You put it down in writing before you go into them. Right. Okay? Good strategy. There is nobody out here that has perfect memory that basically can't get sidetracked in one way or another. Does anybody else have any other questions on this? Okay. Understanding what an ecclesia is, okay? Just think about the word, ecclesia. Enclosure. Encompassing. Okay? Enclave. That means something that is brought together. An assembly is another term for it. It's not a church, okay? That's what they try and claim it is, but it's not. A church came about, the word church came about in the 1500s. And then it was brought into into real time by... uh, out of Rome, but they started using it beforehand for their benefit. And then King James basically saw how powerful it was, and he started using it in the control of England. He put it into the King James Bible, while the Catholics were putting it into the Dewey Reims Bible in the New Testament to try and control the people and bring the people into a temple or a building, a man-made building, which was condemned throughout the Old Testament. Even Jesus condemned that. And see, basically here now, the state has taken control, and they set up their own church. The all-capital United States. The all-capital state of Iowa. The all-capital state of Ohio, whatever. They're all churches. Denominational churches. having their own bylaws and their own creed. You just don't see them as such. And they all have to have memberships. Well, what's the comparable thing in the secular world out here in the government control system to a church membership? It's citizenship. That's why they use the word citizenship. U.S. citizenship. Because now you're a member of the United States Church. Just like King James or King John, whatever the hell, uh, back over there in England was taking control and basically he kept Ecclesia totally out of his New Testament writings. Hmm. 
because ecclesia is the tribunal of man, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost of man, the spirit, the body, and then his fiction. So we don't want to use church, and basically, if you go into the IRS codes, you will see how uh, the usage of the word church, if you, they will try and trick you in under their control in one way or another. Just because you're not a 501c3 church, they still have some other items to try and get a church under their control. But they cannot control an ecclesia tribunal. That's pretty powerful. You found that. That's that's like top. Well, if one of the guys uh, that was on the call last night sent this document to me, and I went over it, and I said, "Hey, this is totally right." I was sort of leading towards that anyway and understanding about the Ecclesia and about the tribe and the tribunal scenario, but this just reconfirmed everything that we needed to put the final touch in. I have a question, Patrick. Yeah. On page three, um, of the of the Ecclesia Quick Claim Deed. Um, is there any significance as to why the, the name is spelled differently in, in the first three um, titles? Like with the In the name? This is in the names, yeah. right? This is in yeah. the names, or usage of the names. Right. Okay? You can spell your name different. Right. However you want to. Right. It's your damn name. Okay? You were born, basically, uh, with a first and middle name, possibly. Okay? You're not dead, so you really don't have a last name yet. And that name was really your clan name or your tribe name. Right. Okay? So when you're out there as the pastor, okay, what do they call going into like a Catholic church? Father David. They don't say Father David Mackin or anything like that. They just say Father David. Right. Of course, the damn Catholic church don't understand that basically you're not supposed to call anybody Father. And then all the damn parishioners, they don't understand reading the damn Bible, even though the damn priest tells them right from the damn pulpit that you will call no man your father. I don't know how damn stupid that is. And all these damn good Catholics think that, that their shit don't stink. Sitting there, turning around, calling this damn nitwit a father. A father of what? Deceit? That's what he is. Hmm. He can't he doesn't even get married. Hmm. So what the hell is he a father of? <laughs> right oh. I think she was meaning the use of the semicolon. Which is, uh, is yeah. not the. You uh, can basically put a semicolon in there between your first and middle name or first and last name, however you want to do it. But basically, what I was trying to show you is that basically everybody in my church is pretty close to being the same name. Not in my church, in my ecclesia, okay? Right. They all have the same name, but they have different office responsibilities. 
That gives them their individuality. See, if you really tried, you can go out and set a corporation up and call it uh, Tom Jones and then go out and hire all the Tom Jones in America to work for that company. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the same scenario. Say nobody, unless your name is Tom Jones, can work for this corporation. So you've got a hundred different Tom Joneses working there. But you separate them out for, by their job title. We're just wearing all the hats. Huh? We're just wearing all the hats. Different individual titles of hat, of office, of responsibility. See, everybody gets hung up on this damn name shit, and they don't even understand what the hell's really going on. You have three prime purpose persons in your item, but basically, uh, tomorrow I want to go out and I'll be a welder. The next day, I'll be uh, a caretaker, whatever. But my name hasn't changed, but my responsibility has. That's why you get called a jack of all trades. The key thing you people have to realize is that powerful one item. The executorial trustee. You don't know how damn powerful that is. You can stand over any court in that capacity. You're the executorial trustee over the testator, the dead person that they're charging. The court, now you're standing over that judge. He's just a damn administrator. This is your person that you're taking care of. And his account. Now they have to give you access to that account because you're the executorial trustee. You're not the executor and you're not the trustee. They can't access those two accounts or that account. But when you combine these two words together, now you have just opened up the door and basically taking control over both facets of that title. <clears throat> yeah, you have control over that judge, too. Because you are also an ecclesia tribunal elector and how do those judges get in their office they have to be elected in there or appointed by an elected official and we became an elector just by reaching age 21 or 25 25. And see, you're not the debtor. That's the fallacy that they've tried to make us, just like the Roman Catholic Church, coming in 
right off the bat. We're going to take away your original sin, your original debt. No, I want my original debt back. Yep. Because that had value to it. That's my worldly assets that Mother Earth gave to me from all my past uh, ancestors. But the church, basically, the uh, Church of Rome tried to claim that away from us under this false baptism bullshit, saying that they're going to forgive that sin. No, they can't forgive that sin. That sin has to stay there until we die. And then we give that back to Mother Earth because the big portion of it is our body. And we have to give that back to Mother Earth. Not in a coffin, not buried in some church cemetery, corporate cemetery, so that they could continue to use that asset for their benefit to get wrapped up in a gunny sack and thrown in the damn hole in the ground. If you're smart, you'll plant a tree over yourself. At least something will show that you're still existing. Of course, if you've been real bad, the tree may not live too long. (laughs) No, this is a... This is the right way to think about this thing, okay? It's the only logical sense that makes any common sense out here. Common logic. Now, on, I'm going to go over one other change that I had here. It's in uh, the second paragraph on that deed. And it's uh, right behind where it says, the, the, uh, in the following described real estate. Okay, so you can get out your pencils and start writing this down. Semicolon as a symbolic delivery. To the grantee per the law of God In the Old Testament, the blank Ecclesia Tribunal of Parson, the blank Ecclesia Tribunal, what? The blank Ecclesia. Tribunal of Parson. Okay. Parson, not person. P A R. Parson. P A R S O N. Right. And then a line, and then uh, I have my name, Patrick, semicolon divine. And the blank there in front of Ecclesia is where you would put your state in. Okay, then after uh, the name, uh, colon, at the Ecclesia Congregation, 
parentheses, care of address, and then write your address in there. You don't need to put your zip code down or anything like that. Symbolic delivery would essentially be something like if you had a uh, hundred thousand dollars in silver that they might bring you a bearer bond for a hundred thousand dollars in silver. Versus the actual silver delivery. And then that bearer bond would give you access. So you can look up the word symbolic delivery. And then, like I said, everything else basically take all the tribal and change them over to tribunal. That was the only other changes that I made. I set these things out uh, late this afternoon. To uh, and I took a copy of my certificate of live birth, copy of my uh, DD-214, a copy of my uh, baptismal record, and I put uh, that template that I had there uh, to release the corporation is released from assurance contractual obligations if the associated quit claim deed is honored. Right. But you can restate state that if you want to. Patrick, where does this as a symbolic give, delivery for uh-huh. go? Where does this speak as up, a speak symbolic Speak up, speak up. And where does this as a symbolic delivery phrase go? I didn't have my document up. It goes right after. You start it. You start what I said there right after the following in the following described real estate. Okay. Then you start as a symbolic delivery to the grantee. Okay. And see, that's a total fallacy that they got us now to be the grantee. Yeah, we were the grantee from the very beginning, but then we became the grantor over to our prodigal son. And then now he's turning around and trying to, uh, we're, he's the grantor granting the stuff that would belong to us back to us. Mm-hmm. And see, that's how the state operates. They get you in a state of confusion. going from one place to another. Slight of hand. It's the shell game. And that's all that this is. This is a big shell game. Conning. They're conning you out of your assets in this whole process. That's what you have to start getting wise to is how you combat them. And that executorial trustee is a big part of shutting them down. Okay, that's about all I've got to say on the subject. You guys go ahead and open it up, and if you've got any questions. Uh, it sounds like what the state did is like a shell game. They switched 
they they moved the peanut around with a bunch of different shells and until they got the shell with the peanut. Well, they basically put the damn thing over there, and they became a promiser of something that basically did not belong to them to begin with. Mm-hmm. They basically took our prodigal son, just like the damn story in the Bible. The prodigal son. Took the assets from the master and left. Had all these big, glorious poop to walls that basically, yeah, go out here and we're going to be in the the corporation, or we're going to be out here in the real world with the bankers and everything. And we're going to live high in the hog and then end up sleeping in a damn hog pen. And he says, hell, I'm better off back at home. Nothing here is anything different. Everything that I've got is right out of the Bible. Right. Yeah, most people take that book of Luke uh, literally. I mean, I, I took it literally when I first heard it. Well, I never really did uh, uh, like that, the way they tried to impose that uh, over to it. Okay, to us. And see, the prodigal son has committed a mortal sin against the father by taking the assets and basically uh, hoarding them away, depriving the master from their usage. That's a mortal sin. And I got the definition of mortal sin up there about what it is. And we have to forgive him that mortal sin, just like in the prodigal, uh, uh, in the parable. And then we have to, since he is now a testator, we have to bring him to his peaceful rest. That's why you had all the ghost movies and everything out here. The people were still tied to the secular world. You have to free them up. Even your dead relatives, they're still tied to the secular world. You've got to give them peace. You've got to free them. And that's where you you will end up coming in as the executorial trustee over their testator. And see, you override any executor that the court or any court-appointed trustee out there in that capacity. Even if your family member became the executor or the trustee, they're not really the true executorial trustee. Mm. And in most cases, they're only dealing with basically what you can see out here in the backyard. The house, the car, whatever. The local bank account, but they don't see the other hidden stuff that basically the executorial trustee can gain access to. Because he's just a little smarter than the average bear, Yogi.
So are we merging this um, quick claim deed with the writ of partition? If you've already got the writ, okay, of partition out there, then you just put this in to substantiate your uh, demands. Okay. You can do this totally as a separate item under that oh, writ know. that's up there at the top. That S I N E, uh, whatever the two other Latin words are, writ. And that's where that property, let see, they try, and, and a lot of those definitions, okay, if you go into Ecclesia, okay, and you have the Latin phrase, Ecclesia, and then uh, a bunch of other Latin words, and one of them is a church. Uh, is not to pay tithes to a church. Wait, you got two churches here. What's going on? Well, see, they put the word church in there to deceive you. Really, your tribunal should not have to pay tithes to a church. You're under no obligation to the state. They're under obligations to us. They don't own anything. They're just a damn corporation. And they try and claim that they have ownership of everything. But they don't. They try and claim that they're going to protect you. No. They do not do that very damn well at all. You have to do that, basically, by uh, uh, being vigilant. And I went over that last week about vigilant. And the in a court of equity, it's the vigilant that gets the aid of equity. Hmm. The slumberer does not. Okay, questions. Now, do we Comments. do this? As, would we do this as? A, could we do this as a group, Pat? With uh, like Jesus did, and you being the thirteenth, and having twelve of us be your apostles, and we coming forward. And uh, you no, know, said, no, you're missing the point. Oh. Jesus had his twelve persons. Oh. Matthew, Luke, John, they were all part of Jesus. They were all his persons. Who wrote the damn most all of those testaments? Which one? Who knew the life story of Jesus? Jesus. John, Luke, and Matthew, how could they know what the hell basically Jesus was up to? They weren't with him the whole damn time. Unless they were part of him. Right. I'll See how that. logical that is? Yes. Yeah. Jesus was the educated one. He was the one that went to Egypt. What was in Egypt? The Library of Alexandria. Hmm. One of the biggest educational uh, areas there at that point in time. It had Egyptian, it had Greek, it had Roman language, all right there. 
Aramaic, right there in the Library of Alexandria. But see, people don't see that part of the story and understand what's being going on. There's more to the Bible than basically just a little uh, messing around who did this to who and who did that to that and basically blood and guts and all that other garbage. That's just the masking over that the money changers and everything have put out here. The blood and guts, because that's what sells. That's what keeps people's interest. But to really sit down and look at this from a logical standpoint, no, nobody's going to do that. Because that destroys their whole understanding that they've been taught. Because they've been taught the lie, and they want to believe the lie. That's why there will be very few out here that really understand what the hell I'm doing. Even in Jesus' time, he had the same scenario. Yeah, 5,000 came to listen to him. And then less than a week later, how many of those people really showed up to be at his side? Hell, his own damn mother wouldn't even come up there and stand beside him. Well, they're treating us all like that, so we must be doing something right. Well, they're not treating us like that. Basically, they're they're giving us acknowledgement. One of the guys, basically, has been putting a bunch of these documents into some of his court items. I don't know whether he's on the line or not. If he is, come on and say what that judge told you about those court documents. Are you thinking of Yashron? Yashron's not on right now. Okay. Anyway, he came in, and basically the judge said, these are some of the best documents I've ever seen submitted into this court. Hmm. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> yeah, that's the documents that I'm writing. Well, good for you then. <laughs> but basically... I was told by uh, a couple other guys that basically I couldn't even be a good legal assistant in the way I'm writing my documents. Is it those documents from It don't IC? take that much to write a legal document. Hey, Patrick, if it makes you feel any better, people that are possessed has, have a retrograde mind. They, they can't think clearly. No. Why criminals always screw up and and leave evidence and everything? They have retrograde minds. Uh huh. It's easy to accuse. It's easy to uh, what do they call it? Uh, ridicule, but it, it, then to investigate, but it cannot be as profitable. Yeah. Easier to ridicule than to investigate, but it cannot be as profitable. But as soon as you get and start using that term, ecclesia, tri- tribunal, and then executorial trustee, I can almost guarantee you're going to have somebody's eyes opened up wide. Hmm. But you had better know that you have the power and you start making demands at that point in time. 
I demand a complete account of this account. I want to see how much value is in that driver's license before we go any further. We know it's an assurance policy. You have a life insurance policy. You call up the insurance company and you demand to know what the value is of that you can basically draw against that insurance policy. How much equity is in there? Well, these items are the same damn thing, only they're state-issued insurance policies known as assurance policies. That would be pretty much the same with any insurance policy, wouldn't it? Yes, but these are assurance policies, and it's the same with every one of them. Anything that's got a number on it that has certificate or license or anything like that, it has to have a value to it. Right. Cash value. Because it's supposed to be there to give you a protection. You gave them the authorization to write the bonds to fund that account. And you have a right to liquidate those accounts at any point in time and release them from their uh, promise of being uh, the insurer. That's why you write that release across that document. You don't surrender it. They're not going to take a surrender of that because they can't. The assets have to come back to us. The only thing we do is we release them of their obligation. But the asset value has to come back to us. And that's what we're doing with this quit claim deed. We're transferring the assets now from the test from the grantor testator back over, fully over to the grantee who is us, the living. Okay? Okay. I sent that red partition that we talked about last week um, to that court case that I have pending. Um, So I'm thinking for this this document I can just send to the Supreme Court on its own. Well, if you've got a local court case, you're going to want to send a copy of, depending on what you're doing, okay, in the court case. Well, I'm telling them like what we talked about, just pay it. Yes, but you had a court case. Was it for a mortgage? Was it for uh, anything like that? Huh? It was for a loan. You take the loan document, and basically you send it back. But you come in as this elect executorial because the loan was really against your fictional person, and he's dead. Right. And you want a complete accounting of that. How much have they drawn out? How much bond value can basically everything that was there against that account. Oh, so I should add this one to it, too, then. Okay. For, just for that, for that loan. 
you would do a quiet claim for that loan, that deed. That was a loan deed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a promissory note involved, so. Yeah, but it was a, read what it says about deeds, okay? And you'll find right. out that almost every instrument out there is a deed of some sort another. Right. Okay? Go ahead and talk. Right. I'm going to check them off. Okay. Hey, Thomas, yeah, what do you think about... Uh, sorry. Go ahead. What do you think about a, um, a title, uh, a car title, that's not actually... In your name. I think Patrick before says it's no longer yours. Well, he told us a while back that that we should be collecting them because we could cash them in, even if they're in other people's names. See, because when I bought the car, I didn't register because I didn't want to give control over it of it to the state. So I have a bill of sale, but I didn't register the title. Well. Ask them that. That if you didn't register the title, then you still have it. Right. Even though someone else has may have gotten title of the car, you still have a title. If you have a bill of sale, then that's yours. Yes. Right. But I ask right. ask them that. Run run by that. Boy, th- this is uh, this is really a power power pack thing he's got here. Uh, right. We we really have to. Uh, uh, get together on the Skype group and get our stuff in. All right. Well, see, that's so what I was first, trying to figure first, out, how to how to change that template that you print on top of the documents. Um, I wanted to print it out in red. Right. But he said do it in publisher, so that's pretty awesome. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't have publisher, but I'd I, I do it my way. I'll, I'll make one. I'll make one and send it to you because you can, you can alter it in uh, Notepad. Oh, you can? Yeah. I'll send it to you. No, notepad is only for text documents. I know, but this is actually a text. It is a text. It's just it's, a, okay. it's an angle okay. trick. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll just, uh, when I do it over from PDF, I'll just send it to you so that you have it, too. Great. Okay. And then everybody but, can change uh, so, some, it. Someone asked me for... Can we get together and work on this? Yes. Join the Skype group, and we get together and work on it. Okay. Skype group has been very inactive. We need to fire it up with people doing this. Right. There there may be more that he's going to add to this, but this is a strong basis, and I I do like that comment uh, that the judge said about the quality of the documents. Right. Yeah, me too. No, oh, because he's he, using a lot of right terms. All right. I'm going to post this website up that I found tonight. It was surprising when I found it. It was about, it, it. I was looking at documents, and it was all about documents. This one guy posted a picture of this document, and he was amazed by it, and I looked at it, and it was a document to England that shut, completely shut him down, and it was a personal uh, tri- tri- tribunal uh, uh, notice which all, I read all the words in it and seen the seal and everything, the justice seal and the flower, the the leaves around the justice symbol. And I went into the website because there's a website posted also on the post that was related to the document and the website was on the document at the bottom. And I went to that website and I went to um, forms to the instruments and uh, the ones he has up there, I started reading them and it's exactly what Pat talks about. So I'll post that up there to see if anybody's interested in it. Okay. Is it very similar to what Patrick is doing? Yes, I was reading it. I was almost getting chills. I was thinking, my goodness. Uh, is... uh, can, can you get, get me the documents so I can fax them to them? Absolutely. Yep. And I'll, I'll uh, put the picture up there that I've seen, too, on the post, okay. uh, the document. And I'd like to go over them to see how close they are because... You know, we're warning everybody don't mix processes. But if yeah, and, very, the, and these this are documents very, that actually worked. That he these, actually this, did. This is very yes. This is, this is especially in England. 
because uh, if it, these documents worked in England, you said, right? Yeah, this is a uh, document right to the crown. Yep, shutting it down completely. His his uh, prodigal son. Okay, well then we have people in Canada and Australia who would love to see this. All right, so I'm going to give it to you guys on uh, Skype then. Okay, good. Is that cool, or do you is that what you want, or you want to just me just give it to you, and then you can look it over you, and just well, you can, if you want you, to spread it. Yeah, you can put it on the Skype. You can put it on the Skype group. Let other people look at it too. Okay, all right. Will do. So should we be doing a, um, a, a, an embosser and um, an ecclesiastical notary um, stamp separate too? No, I think Patrick is saying use the tribunal seal uh, on any everything. Right, and that was okay. one of the first things I got. I, I did have a second one I made up of judge, banker, and clerk, but uh, we're not doing that anymore. All right. Well, I had one for the executor. He said, don't use that any for that right. one out. Right, right. And then I had another one for a secured party. I said, that one is no good. Nope. No, I've just okay. been using the straight tribunal one. But you, you know <clears throat> what he said the last time? Uh, an embossery isn't absolutely necessary. Go get a rubber stamp. Right. self thinking rubber stamp. All right. Well, I think that the 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 raised seal um, shows that impressive. it's an original. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. However, it doesn't copy well. That's why I got one of those. Uh, I forget what you call them, but it's just a circular ink pad that you you actually roll on the top of the seal, so it uh, colors the the seal. Oh, okay. I think he called it a thumper. Yeah. See, a couple of my stamp pads actually have that in there already. Okay. Yeah, it prints. It prints the raised part. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to ink it because if you scan it and send it off, they don't know it's been embossed. Right. From from the copies, it don't it doesn't appear embossed on the copies. Oh, and I found um, Office Max. Um, that was them in one day. Okay. Your um, your embosser. So you can phone it in, or do they have a way of submitting it to them online, and then you go pick it well, up the I'm next day? Well, I'm assuming you can go. I'm assuming you can go to the website. I went straight in there, and she just okay. gave me a little form field to fill out, and I'm supposed to be picking it up tomorrow. Okay, okay. You have to have making you fill a piece of paper like that, that that's very easy for them to put up on the web. Right. And it was uh thirty nine dollars. Okay. Yeah, the one I, I got from uh Omaha was thirty dollars. Yeah, I saw a couple that were cheaper. It's just that the, you had to wait for shipping and all that. So. Right, right. By the time you add, add in shipping, it's probably very close. Yeah. Now, uh, is the kind you have there one that you can take the actual stamp out and put a second one in into the uh, crimper? Um, I I'm not really. I don't think so. I don't think so. There, really. there, there's two, there's two versions of these. One where the Stamp is just fixed in the crimper, and another one where where it's it's separate and you can pull it out and stick it in another one. All right. Well, there's two plates. I know that. She's one on the top right. and one on the bottom. Right, right. But uh, they're they're on a V, and you can pull the V out. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I, don't know. I, 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 got, I got one be. of those. I, you know, I have. I, I don't have two embossers, but I have two of those seals. I can pull one out and put the other one in. Right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm determined <clears throat> to get down tomorrow and, and go through these things and really crank them out. Uh, All right. You know, I, that's just, I still feel obliged to go through the definition several times because each time I go through them, I mean, some of them I've read five, five, six times. And each time you see something new, 
And uh, you right. know, but the, the comment that he made about uh, if you if you present this to anybody, always do it with the paper in hand. Never do it from memory. That's great. Great. Uh, okay. So, strategy. Tom, I notice he's using deed of partition instead of writ of partition. Well, there is a writ of partition. Well, in what you, you mean, the, uh, the Supreme Court case? No, no, with the way he wrote his uh, ecclesiastical quit claim deed. He calls it a deed of partition instead right, of. Right, but a, a, a writ is when you're directing somebody to do something. So that what we submitted to the Supreme Court is a writ of partition. Oh, okay. That's right. a different document then. Right. Yeah, that's we were working on that last week. And that's still necessary. If you haven't sent that in yet, you can send them both at the same time. <clears throat> but if you know, we're, if we're going to, uh, once you have a case open, you can send in amendments. So if you already have the case in there, send this uh, send in the Ecclesia Tribunal one as an amendment. So I okay, that's cool. I just wanted to understand that the writ of partition still is very important. Yes, it's key. It has to be there. We can't do it just uh, just with this uh, writ of what is this. Sine ascensu capituli. Yeah, it's a quick claim deed. Okay. But it's written up as as, as the at that writ sine ascensu capituli. Let me just check that again. Now he sent them express mail, like through the post office, or yes, I'm express so, mail. Right Certified. now, I, I was uh, just. Uh, I'm going to send mine priority mail. Okay. So, so it takes two days, but it still still has a registration number, and with priority mail, you can buy the label and paste it on your. You know, get some priority mail envelopes. Uh, by each, um, uh, it costs basically five dollars and five cents uh, uh, when you buy it online, and stick the whole thing in the priority envelope and you leave it in your mailbox. Yeah, I, I know. I removed my mailbox a while back. Whereas the express mail, you've got to go down there and register it. When he, hey, Thomas, when I'm looking at this uh, writ of partition at the end, it says signed by plaintiff, and it has a whole bunch of letters and numbers and a bunch of other stuff. What's that all about? Which one? Where is he? Is that just, is that just a sample of of, uh, of letters what of, it? of uh, signature? It says signed by Where plaintiff, and then it has a bunch of junk. Oh, are, are you, you talking looking about the text partition? <laughs> you're looking partition. probably at the text. You're looking at the text file. Well, I'm looking at yeah, whatever. If you're looking at the text file, it's riddled with scan errors. Oh, I okay. sent that out as a courtesy, but then everybody got bent out of shape because it's not perfect. Well, if they can't stand the courtesy. I won't do it anymore. Oh, what right. what did you do? You corrected it. Yeah, first I I have an online site where I I uh, run OCR on it and at least get some of it correct, right. and then then I bring it into a, 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 a doc file and I correct it. So right. where's the correct yeah, file at? Well, basically you, you'll have to take the PDF and take the other document and bounce the PDF against it and make the corrections yourself. Okay, okay, I got it. Huh. Right. I did. I think he's talking about the text file that everybody was complaining about because it has full of scan errors. But I put it out there because uh, I could put that out immediately when I put the, the PDF up there, and it took me longer to get the doc file. Yeah, so basically I, to give I, you a format to start working with, uh, but uh, always uh, 
try and bounce it against the PDF because the PDF yeah. shouldn't have errors in it if it's copied right. Uh, properly. Right, and when right. I distribute it, I, I said check it carefully against the PDF. Well, that's good. I understand. I understand it's a format. That's good. I just was like wondering about it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna copy paste or anything. I'm just looking at it. Yeah. And a lot of cases, it's best if you type it out yourself. Okay. Yeah. Right. That way, you're typing all the words, and you're looking at the words as you go through. Okay. Right. 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 Like at the end, it says uh, deliver converted res equity to blank uh, uh, Iowa Ecclesia address. Now, just take a look at what it says in the PDF. Compare right. it to that. Oh, okay. i got to find the PDF of it then. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions out there on this, Tom? Comments? Major uh, not, items? Not really. We just we discussed uh, working together to get these out. Uh, uh, there, there were some questions of uh, how, how do you uh, use this writ and uh, it, a follow up that we submitted to any court case. And we basically were just went over what you said. Then. Try to develop yeah, an basically, the best thing to do is go down there and start going into courts. Okay. Okay. Learn what they do. Okay. Oh, just start, attend, attend yeah, court start and building just up your people. confidence that you are more powerful than they are. Good idea. But then once you get this done, you're not going to be wanting to go back there anyway. Mm. Should mm -hmm. never end up getting back into a, one of their secular courts. Right. And once you get this done, they don't want to see you in there either. Right. Because well, they, well, they can't make any money off of you any longer. Huh. But that would be good good for me. I'm two blocks away from the county district, uh, eastern branch of the county district court. It would be good practice to just go in there and build up confidence. Yeah, but basically you don't need to, okay? All right. Well, I'm, I, I can see where I, I've got to just yeah. really spend the time. It's, the only if you, it's only if you're going to have to go in into the court itself. Okay, and in most of these cases, you're just going to submit the stuff in and say, hey, make it happen. I'm giving you this rent to have this property now delivered to me. Because I'm boss. Excuse me, sorry. Now, I faxed those things in, these last items, into the Supreme Court, into the Vicar General into the district court. And on the fax cover sheet there, I address that writ. That for this writ, make this happen. Hmm. For, the for the attached documents and for the writ, just the name of the writ, make it happen. So they're going to have to do the switch of the figures. Huh? But they're going to have to do the switch of the figures from, from being dead to being uh, the living and give us those assets and put them into an account for us uh, so we could get a direct... The uh, account's you know. already there. All they have to do is throw the damn switch, okay? Yeah. And then basically uh, put it onto uh, that uh, 
delivery to us. Mm -hmm. Symbolic delivery. Put it over onto the damn uh, uh, item. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're not going to pull up to the door with a Brinks truck with all a million dollars worth of silver in it. Mm -hmm. You could tell them to just put it into your account electronically or something, right? No. No. You get it, okay? Oh, yeah. You have them bring it to you, okay? Right, 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 because otherwise they'll just take it. They'll steal it. You want to make sure that they're going to make the delivery, okay? Right. You want real money anyway. You don't want the banker's fiat. Federal Reserve yeah, notes. Well, we will get that converted, okay? See, every Federal Reserve dollar is worth seven cents. Okay? That's seven right. cents in silver. I'm surprised it's worth seven cents, yeah. Well, if it's eighteen dollars and uh ninety cents for an ounce of silver, then okay. basically do the conversion. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't the rate change daily, though? Yep. Yes. Okay. Because 18 times 7 is $1.26. But what? It's $1.26. It's one twenty-six. No, 18 into a dollar. Okay. Well, it's less than six cents. It's more like a nickel. Okay, it's about six cents. Okay, that correlate to why the postage stamp is 49 cents. Because it's really three cents in silver. Oh, wow. Yeah, you're still sending mail for three cents. That's the law. A three cent letter. Even though it's forty nine cents in Federal Reserve cents, it's still three cents in silver. Yeah, it's actually Yeah, you want to see what the conversion ratio is, just go to the post office. So do we still get our weight in gold, from our birth weight? When you take yeah. out the whole thing, you'll get something, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one divided by 18.9 is uh, 5 cents, point, 5.3 cents. Okay, whatever it is. Okay, stop playing around with that for right now, okay? Get back uh, to the basic shit here, okay? Mm-hmm. Is there any questions on this deed? The transferring of this over to you. The release, what you put on the document to release them from their assurance liability and okay. obligations. And we put that on a copy of the document. Not the original. Yes. Or Good. you can put it on the original. Okay. You turn around and you take that template that I had up there, type that in in uh, Microsoft Publishing. You can turn that in Microsoft Publishing and put it at an angle. And then you sign it, okay, witness by my hand or whatever it says there. You sign it, and then you put your thumbprint.
every time you every time you say signed by uh, your hand on an individual basis, you use your thumbprint. Now, when you do the ecclesiastical seal, then you're going to use your right and left index fingers as the two witnesses. Mm. Okay. Now, sealing of two. That was the tribunal seal that I had out there for years. Do not use the executory or the executor seal that we came up with. Do we emboss both signatures, both signed by hand? No, you just do the notary one. Okay, okay. Read the document. It doesn't say anything about sealing the others. Right, it doesn't. You just put your thumbprint there. Okay. Because that's by your hand, your right hand. Now, if you sign left-handed, use your left thumbprint. See, this isn't that complicated. Stop Mm. trying to make it complicated. That's what the whole damn Patriot community out there was trying to make this thing more damn complicated. And they totally screwed it all up. Then they wanted to keep arguing law when everything out here is in equity. Okay, no other questions or comments or anything? Okay, call tonight, Tom. Thank thank you very much, Patrick. I'll get right down to work on this. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Good night.